Hi, my name is Dr. Ray Tahiri, School of Engineering, UBC Okanagan. Uh, UBC, along with uh, numerous universities worldwide, decided to switch to online uh, lectures in order to prevent further spread of coronavirus. Uh, I know it's a little bit inconvenient for students and for educators, but I thought that maybe this is a good opportunity for uh, some of us that we have not switched to online courses, you know, uh, and we take this opportunity to um, follow this trend. I have been uh, putting my lectures online since 2008, uh, from 2010, very actively. Uh, today I want to give you a um, few tips and also introduce few uh, very easy and user-friendly softwares which make uh, putting uh, your lectures online a breeze. If you haven't done it, I guarantee by the end of this uh, about one hour uh, session, you uh, will be able to do quite a few things that you thought before is not possible. There are numerous softwares you can use uh, for screencasting as well as for um, putting your lectures online. Uh, UBC uses mostly Camtasia Snugget, Standard Practice. I know both of them are good softwares. I've used some also professional softwares such as uh, Flashback Pro. Uh, there are quite a few, but these softwares that I will introduce you, especially one which is called OBS Studio. This is by far the Ferrari of uh, screencasting softwares and you will admit when I uh, show you uh, some nitty-gritty things about that software most important thing to start right off the bat is you have to ask yourself what are my objectives what are the goals what am I uh, trying to accomplish uh, do I want to put my lectures only as simple as possible just to uh, inform students few uh, points. Do I want to become more advanced? I embed the videos. Do I have uh, labs to demonstrate? These are all very different. If you really want to just incorporate some voice to your already existing PowerPoints, that is very simple. You know, you don't need to study the root, you just pick the fruit. I will show you how easily it is accomplished uh, using PowerPoint. So that's step one. And then I will introduce a software which is much more advanced, built on uh, PowerPoint, and then we take it from there. Let me start by uh, level one. So imagine I have uh, this lecture notes you know this is actually I, I taught uh, a couple of weeks uh, ago to a group of high school students in KSS in Kelowna and this is a part of my uh, lectures so obviously when I show something uh, I, I talk but right now so because it only would be a lecture all I need to do add a narrative to my uh, lecture notes you open your uh, PowerPoint. I keep saying SolidWorks because I use SolidWorks a lot. So you open your uh, PowerPoint. You go to Slideshow, this icon. And then you go to Record Slideshow. Right here. And then logically you want to start from the beginning, but you can do on a current slide, assuming I want to do from the beginning. And press this and you can see that you do have the slide animation and narration you can also use uh, simply uh, your uh, pen to write things exactly the same thing that you do in lecture in front of a live uh, audience except here is done remotely okay there we go so it goes to this mode and now I am actually recording. You can see that in top here I have this recording. So next thing I do, so I talk about this for example. I bring the next slide. And you can 
keep adding to you, you know your slides the voice be careful when you go and advance to next give a little pause so for example I stopped here and now I start again otherwise it does not kind of um, gives you that transition smoothly and I talk about for example idea and this is identify and then you develop and then you execute and you assess so imagine that this has been done so I want to save this so all I need to do is you go here you press this and let's see what has happened. So you can see that in every single slides, I have this icon here, I mean, until here, and you click on this, it opens. So you see, my voice was recorded. So if I make this and save this make it available to my students when the students watch this you go first one so and the next so the only thing the students should pay attention is uh they don't have to advance because they advance too fast they will miss a part of uh, your your voice not a bad idea you just give them a little bit of the flag this is the end of slide 5 or just say advance to next slide give them this hint that they don't actually go uh, fast because this is uh, whenever you record something this belongs to associate to that particular slide so that was the simplest way that you can have a narrated uh, PowerPoint in each slide either I mentioned you can have a specific uh, voice or you continuously record your voice in this particular case students are the one who driver's seat they have to uh, keep advancing uh, and it's a PowerPoint format one step up is uh, you can maybe do a video capture of your PowerPoint and in that case uh, you record your voice but also you are in control of how you advance it where you want to pause when you want to uh, perhaps uh, add more comments it's almost like you are in the lecture hall so for accomplishing that again is the built-in feature in solid work you go to insert and you click on screen record there we go so here is screen record this menu opens of, of often bring it to a different uh, window but anyway you open again and it's you need to select the area so I only go select my screen so that's one way you to do or you go to uh, let me exit from here you go to show so let me go back again here you select this and go back to uh, PowerPoint and then you go to actual show you slide show and now you selecting the entire screen so the difference is if I use this technique uh, I I'm able to also add the animations here so the audio is on I go simply say record there we go it gives you a, a prompt that takes a couple of seconds and from now on everything is recorded so I can advance it to the next slide uh, you know I can go next you know talk about other uh, concept and whenever you are done you can say escape and here what we got look at that now uh, it gives you an actual video here and let's just play this video for a second
There we go, you have it. Now, you might say, what should I do with this? You can embed it in the PowerPoint, or there's a kind of tricky features not many people maybe know. You go here, right-click, save as a media. And I'm going to save it as, like, a media one here. And this is MP4. That's the only one you can do, and this is the most useful one. Okay, you saved it. And when I go here to my... So there we go, uh, media four, right here, or media one. Uh, I have to open it in VLC, open with VLC, and here is actual video. Now, you see, you will see this line here, and you might say, what is this? So it's a little tricky because I am actually doing two things at the same time. I'm recording this video with another software. Why inside the video, though, the video, I'm recording it by um, by PowerPoint. So you you don't do that. So that's a little bit complicated now. So this is for the previous windows I selected, embedded because I'm making this video. Yours is gonna be very crisp you don't have any problem so that's another level so in this case you have a video let's say you offer a 50 minutes lecture you can have 50 minutes all talking you, you go on and um, so it would be very coherent um, both of these methods they have their own advantages and disadvantages you have to know uh, what fits you the best so this was uh, all you need to know about using PowerPoint, but you are completely boxed within PowerPoint. What if you want to show another software? What if you want to go to YouTube and show a video? What if you want to browse something on Internet? Obviously, uh, whatever I methods I mentioned, these are all within PowerPoint. In that case, if you want to go outside of the PowerPoint, you do need to use another screen capture software. Um, I introduce you two of them. Uh, first, first one is it's called Fast Stone Capture. Uh, I think it's free for a period of time, but then it's about twenty dollars or something. It's one of the easiest software to use, and you will love it. It's just plug and play, ten seconds learning curve. And the next one, which is more advanced, is called OBS Studio. So this is the Ferrari of the software I was talking, and it's pretty uh, sophisticated. You can have many inputs. It's not a bad idea. If you want to add more uh, connection to your students, you have your also video in your laptop or in any other uh, capture video source, your face. Uh, body language is very important. This could add, or you can add also extra input, like you're running an experiment uh, simultaneously. You have more than one um, input uh, of a video streaming. Then you go to a little more advanced software, which we'll talk about it uh, in a few minutes. And then I talk about Zzoom, which is very uh, important. Sometimes you want to zoom something. And last but not least, we talk about a video editing software. Okay. Uh, let us start with a fast stone. So you can download it here, and this is the icon here. So right away when you click on it, it gives you this menu. So what do you want to do? You want to open something, and you want to capture. You want to go and, you know, part of the screen. You want a snapshot, or uh, you want to make a video. Obviously, in this case, I want to record the screen. You press this one, right away tells you what you want to do. Is a full screen, is a part of that, always use the rectangle. And often I don't need to show the bar here, so I go rectangle, record, and I'm going to go from here all the way to here. So then it's asking you, you know, do you want to follow the mouse pointer or you want to put something in a kind of uh, a title uh, clip? If that's the case, you can do. Otherwise, you start. And this thing comes here underneath. It says if you want to stop it, you can do that. So you press Control, uh, 
F10, so Control F10, and you can see that this menu came. So you can stop it, you can discard it, or you can resume. In this case, it's resuming. Now, imagine I'm using PowerPoint, and I'm going to go to my PowerPoint here. So I show all these things. And then I say, well, wait a minute, and you don't need actually this one. You can go all the way down here. Somebody don't need to see it. And then you can say, well, let's just get out from PowerPoint. And I'm going to go to Internet, and I can do something else here. And then go back again to internet, to PowerPoint. So you, you are completely uh, free of what you want to show in a screen. Everything in your screen is going to be captured. And then, if I am happy with that, so you press Control F10, and it saves it. It does save it. And then, let me get out from here. Let's watch what we have. And be even cognizant here that because previously I was um, using different software, uh, using FastStone to show you the PowerPoint. Now I'm using another software to show how to use FastStone. So I can use FastStone to show how to use Fast. So let me go to the video I made. This is the one, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, that's the one. And let me just open it here. Okay, open it with VLS. Yeah, that was actually uh, the video you watch. So the next software I want to introduce is OBS Studio. It's a very powerful software with lots of options, very user friendly, and I highly recommend my colleagues to get familiar with this software. And it's free, unbelievable. Um, in order to get this software, uh, you simply on Google type uh, OBS Studio, which I will do in a second. So go to Google, and I just put OBS Studio. So this will come. So it, it's a kind of broadcasting. So as you can see, I have Windows, I have Linux, and I have Mac. So in this case, I press in window. Obviously, a menu opens. So it's pretty much the same standard. You you download the file. And after you downloading the file, you open it, maybe ask you a few things, you know, the license agreement, so on. And this would be the menu. Oh, hi. Uh, uh, yours doesn't look like this, by the way, because I already used that. The first thing you should do, uh, if you accidentally open few menus, you know, I always tell my students, you know, when you using a software, again, I refer to SolidWorks, there are... 20,000 features and you just get excited like a kid in the 747 cockpit pressing all the buttons and soon enough Houston we got a problem so you don't know what you did to get to that point if this happens to you uh, my suggestion for using this software is simply you go to file show setting folder so you see all the settings are here get out from the software right and I'm gonna delete everything here just delete it delete and then I will open again uh, the software so here is the menu that you will uh, see It's coming. I'm running many things now, and that makes it a little slower. Uh, let me see. Let me just shut down some of these guys here. There we go. It came. Let me just close this one too. Close this one. Okay. So yes, auto is good. So this is the menu. Um, and again, they ask you this. So, yeah, okay, you say next, next, 
or you can cancel it. It doesn't matter. You can you can reorder it. It, it doesn't uh, more. It's not important. Okay. Now you have this menu. I have to tell you, it seems complex, but it's extremely easy and user friendly. And I suggest you simply uh, follow the simple instruction, and you will see it's so versatile. First thing is I'm capturing obviously uh, the screen with another software to be able to show you how to do this. I will introduce introduce that software later on. So I want to add uh, features to the capture screen. So here is the scenes. Here are the sources, and you can see that now as I'm talking the the microphone this moves that shows that the microphone is working and I'm gonna bring this one lower here this is for another uh, cast screencast software first comes first so uh, I want to add a screen capture to this so I go to source and I go to add here so my first uh, objective is to add uh, a display capture there we go you put it here you just call it whatever you call this leave it as display capture so it opens this menu you see this red is my screen you might say it's a little confusing what is this you know um, I did a little bit of kind of going to why it looks like this. You know, what am I doing? You know, I'm actually capturing the screen. A screen capture um, software is almost you have two parallel mirrors in front of each other, and you go and then you will see the infinite reflection of your uh, your image. So don't mind this. So here is what we have, and I say okay. So this is the first thing I have. This is my screen. It covers everything. What if, for example, in this case, I don't want this bar to be captured? Okay, easy enough. So you press uh, Alt and drag this, make it smaller. If you want to make the whole thing smaller or larger, you can do like this. So if I go above, you see this parallel lines. It shows that you are... Uh, outside of the window so you should click it here anything I do in this screen if I for example bring the PowerPoint this will be captured right so this is the entire screen from this point to this point okay so Next thing, what, what if I want to add my own face or, you know, uh, live camera? So you go here again, add. So you go here to video capture. And the good thing about this software, you can have multiple input. One would be your laptop uh, camera. You can maybe demonstrate something, you know, on your desk. That would be another thing and so on. Let's go to the capture and in my case I have only one device okay there we go so it's captured here I say okay just leave it the same thing and okay so here is I can move it anywhere I want so I want to make it smaller and I want to put it in this corner it actually snaps in I don't think this is something that you need to do but if you even want to change the ratio I mean these are very nitty-gritty not many software can do that again I can go here and I can use control and move this up and down or I use control shift and I can make one side uh, less or more if I do like this obviously it's distorted all I need to do to get back is just go to the corner and bring it to the original side if you want to make it smaller with the same ratio obviously um, you don't want to distort the live image you go here and I snap it in right there let's see what other things we can do so I'm gonna go here add what if I want to have a picture maybe UBC logo somewhere so let's go here add an image 
image so call it image you go browse it I go maybe to here UBC logo right here comes oops there we go open brings it here okay well it's way too big I gotta go here and make it much smaller and there we go right there what if I want to add some text to my screen well again go here text let's call it text what do you want to add here I call it maybe ENGR 376 uh, I can change the color let me just go here uh, in order to change it you can just simply go to read from a file uh, unclick it again so just go here to select the color I want to make it red okay and then I'm gonna move this maybe here okay and I'm gonna move it actually underneath right here this would be where it's gonna place what if I want to add actually a video while I am doing other things or I'm demonstrating a video let's see uh, add so we go to um, multimedia or media source okay browse um, maybe I don't know use the UBC logo as a video here let me see there we go so I'm gonna make it smaller and I snap it here there we go so or I put it here right so you can change the order of these things back and forth you can see that I can maybe make this multi uh, this to be on the top front I can do anything I want I can add another video if I want and there's a reason I'm doing it to show you something so let's go add another um, video number two let's go here to here and then say design thinking design thinking or just drag it down here Uh, let's choose one of them maybe this one okay okay so I'll put this one here and so if if I want to uh, start this is what I want I want to start the capturing the video so I'm gonna go here oh couple of things uh, let's just go to the setting uh, I talk more about it later but the most important thing is uh, the, the where the video goes the video goes here if I want to put the video for example let's say my downloads I put it here and this would be the the location and here I'm gonna change it uh, FLV is the easiest format that you can upload on uh, YouTube but mostly we use mp4 okay forget about that all good apply okay and then I'm gonna start uh, recording I can do also a streaming a little more complex you can but let's just stick with what we have okay so uh, let's just start the recording now it is recording so obviously this is running from halfway we will tell how we can fix that you have my video here maybe I should have done that which is okay so let's say this is what you want you do your lectures you know you always do a couple of uh, kind of trial uh, my voice you can see is good now you can see there are two voices one or actually more than two uh, the other one actually didn't have a voice the other video but this is the source too and this is the mic okay let me see what happens here now I'm gonna stop it uh, and I'm gonna go here to find uh, that video which is here 
So I'm going to open it uh, using VLC. So you, you saw that that's what we have here. This was exactly the menu I recorded. This is the video is running, which is obviously is not the way I want. I show you a trick that how you can start and uh, stop your video, hide and unhide. But pretty much we are doing what uh, we intended to do. So we have the screen, whatever I write. We have my uh, camera. We have logo. We have you know, um, some writing here. We also running a video. So that's good. Let me close this. And I'm going to delete this not to make it. Okay. So now let me go back here. So it actually, uh, let me just, yeah. So it actually, uh, didn't serve exactly what I wanted because the video comes halfway through. Why not you go to setting and then there's a key that seems to come advanced and this advanced actually, sorry, you go to uh, hotkeys and here is a very interesting. So every part you put, you can actually show and hide it. So if, for example, I want the video and this is the video here, the number two. If I want the video not to start from the beginning, overlap on my voice, but it does it whenever I want, then I type Shift A. This is the show the video, and Shift B is to hide it. So obviously I start from Shift B. And how about my uh, lecture? Uh, ENGR 376 here, text shift C and shift D is the next one. And let's just talk about uh, if I don't want to have my, always have my face, my camera, uh, then this is the capture here. So I would say shift E and shift F. Shift F. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if it's working or not. So let's just Shift uh, B. You see, Shift B stop the video, so I don't have the video. Uh, and maybe I don't need uh, to have my, you know, uh, video capture here. So it was Shift F. Oh, not Shift F. Shift E. Bring it back. Um, let me go again, maybe I, that was the screen, so let me go back again here to hotkey, uh, oh, sorry, this was, I wanted not the display, uh, so let's just call it a space, okay, so the other one, I wanted to integrate it, okay, this one, sorry, Did, I want to show the, um, the video let's just put it shift e so this one the video capture we call it uh, shift g and let's call shift h so g and h okay so if i want for example to be hidden shift h you see my screen i don't have the screen uh so if i want to start the capturing here i go here and start so halfway through I want to bring for example the video and the video was I think shift E or A B C D I don't forgot H who should have thought about it so let's go here the video multimedia okay sorry shift A and B shift A and B shift a so you see the video starts so it has the voice 
maybe I don't talk, I do now, but I mean, I pause until the video finishes, and let's say I don't want this anymore, shift B, hide it. Uh, I remember now it's shift C, I believe, was bringing this, and shift D is to get rid of it. Shift D, you get rid of the actually uh, the um, text. So you want to bring now the camera, you press shift G, it brings it. I talk, and then I want to stop, shift H. And let me just uh, stop recording. It's already saved, and I will go to uh, here and open it. So this is basically what we did. As much more you can do, again, I can uh, emphasize it has much more capacity. This uh, software you can do streaming. You can add more features. You can uh, add, maybe you could have two or three video input. Um, but this basically is uh, enough to put uh, your uh, screencast video uh, on uh, online so we have done most of it I, I encourage you to go there are lots of things here uh, you can also add by the way audio is very simple if you want to add an extra audio you go again to setting here and there's an audio section how you want it you know you can have voice on voice or you can have it muted you come back I would say I'm sure you can figure it out uh, by yourself but you see how versatile it is just click 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 and that's it you get the, the whole thing set up uh, it can be easier than that uh, of course it can that's why I introduce another software which doesn't have uh, many of these features but still uh, it does the job okay now that we learn how to screencast uh, either through PowerPoint or through Fastone or OBS studio uh, it comes to a point that you often need to video edit your um, so now that we learn how to screencast uh, your lecture either through PowerPoint or Fastone or even using a more advanced software like OBS studio often you end up uh, edit your video the reason is uh, someone interrupts you, knock your door, a phone rings, or you perhaps are not happy about a segment of what you uh, talk in your lecture. So you need to take that part off and you do some video editing. Often what I do is that even if I make a mistake, so I don't bother to stop screen uh, capturing, I pause and then I continue from the, that part that I want to replace. And when it comes to uh, video editing, I can simply do it so before I go to uh, telling you about this uh, free uh, make video there is a very uh, quick note on 
an app that you can put uh, on your computer and this is called Z Zoom. Uh, sometimes you have some details, let's say you have a schematic or uh, there's a picture, you need to zoom but you don't want to use the other available uh, zoom features in Windows, it's a little inconvenient, this would be a very helpful. So all you need to do, um, you go to, uh, sorry, you go to here and you Z zoom and uh, this is the one we have here so you open this and download it there we go you can open it right here and here is uh, ZZoom so I'm just gonna close this it's a very convenient software so let's say I am uh, anywhere like it even even uh, in Word or anywhere else so I simply bring the Z zoom and whenever my mouse or wherever my mouse goes it actually zooms so all I need to do I hover my mouse above the location so you also can go and improve increase the magnification up to about 15 times you see now that's that's the corner of the S uh, you can magnify this window the way you want uh, I teach lots of phase diagrams and lots of details and it would become very handy if I want to zoom in uh, into uh, a location. So you can also use simply uh, the roller in your mouse. So let's get to uh, final stage of this video which is the FreeMake uh, video software. Again, you can just simply go and type here uh, FreeMake, FreeMake video. So it's a free software. Uh, if you get the free version, uh, it's completely um, open, but except it put a few seconds of uh, watermark at the end, I believe. Or you can buy it, it's rather inexpensive. Uh, I bought it long time ago and I use it on daily basis so you can download it from here and here is the menu you will get in this software so let's say I have a video and I want to edit that video uh, I simply go to wherever the videos are have few here so I'm just gonna let's say I want to drag these three this this and this I'm just gonna drag it here so simply comes here so let me close this so these are my videos. Each of them I can play. Uh, let's say go on this one here. This, 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 this one. Yeah. So this is one of them, and this is another one. So imagine I want to remove part of this. I go, for example, I listen to it. I go to this part, and I made a mistake. All I need to do is I pick. The beginning of the section I want to cut and I go to find the end of the section I want to cut and I simply cut it and okay I do with whatever I want sometimes you have a video like a 10 minutes you want to have first three minutes and last three minutes so you remove for example uh, four minutes between you can bring same video a few times and you can pick a um, few segment of that video so the only thing you have to know after you done this you go and click on this join file so it will join all these files one after the other one you can also uh, remove the audio if you have a video or you have something that it has a voice you don't want you want to change it or is a loud voice you can improve the quality of that you can also add subtitle for the subtitle you have to purchase an extra one it's a very handy you can type whatever you want um, and all you need to do is you pick uh, your desirable format from a long list that's one of the advantages of this software too you can convert your uh, video to any of these uh, highly popular so if you want to put on YouTube FLA is the one the smallest size and is very easy to upload it on 
uh, YouTube. Uh, most common one is MP4. If you want to have WMV or AVI, these are all uh, possible. So, and I go here, let's say I want to use, for example, MP4. Okay, it asks you where you want to put this. You can put it here. You can also change the speed. You can do one pass or two passes. The quality will be changed. And there are quite a few things you can also play around, but you don't need that. So this particular one is 1 1.6 uh, gigabyte. It's, it's a huge because it, it's about a one hour um, video. So, and then I say convert. It gives you this uh, large, uh, long uh, time, but this is not a real time. It actually reduces much uh, to a much uh, lower time. And based on my experience, about one hour, it takes about 15 minutes. Even this one would be uh, kind of reduced. So I hope this video uh, helps you to get some of the kind of uh, nitty-gritty uh, tips on how to make uh, your lecture available online. Uh, I would be more than happy to help my colleagues uh, in both campus as well as anywhere else. Uh, I would be looking forward to hearing from your comments. Thank you very much and stay safe.